All right, now we're going to start our quilt top assembly. And for this part, there's a few different things you can do. I mean, you can take these blocks and do whatever you want with them as far as how you're going to put your quilt together. Um, but I want to do one where it's just one train that's featured instead of a few different trains. And so I've decided that I'm going to lay them out this way. So I have my engine and coal car and then three of the cars. And then on the bottom here, I have the um, rest of the cars. So if you want to do it this way, you can watch. If you already know how you want to do it, go ahead and do what you want and just fill in the gaps where you need to. But I'm just going to start sewing these from end to end. So just sewing all these together. And then on the end here, I have two pieces I'm going to attach. These are three and a half by five and a half inches. And then on the bottom here, I have 10 inches by um, five and a half inches that'll attach onto the bottom. So, yeah, that's it. So now I've sewn both of those strips together. I've attached the long white strips on this one and the short ones up here and I cut three long strips that were, you can choose four and a half or five inches by the width of the fabric. So four and a half inches by say 42 inches. And I'm gonna cut three of those and I'm gonna sew those all together so that I have a lot of nice um, blank space in my quilt and it really highlights the actual train. All right, I'm gonna show you how to finish this up here. So you can see I've already finished mine. Um, once you have your quilt top assembled, so you've sewed all those rows together, I just take something round, um, I usually use my embroidery hoop because that's what I have, and then a fabric marker, and I'm just draw, going to draw a uh, curve along each corner. One second, buddy, okay? Um, and so after you've done that, then we're going to attach this um, track. And if I were going to do this again, I think I would make the track a little bit bigger so that, because I want it to be like a little play mat where people can drive their little trains or cars or whatever right along the track here. So as I show you how to do this, I'll do it with a little bit wider of a track. Hey, I'm gonna show you how to make the track that you're gonna sew around the outside of your play mat train quilt. So here I have two strips of fabric. You could do black if you wanted, I chose brown, but one brown and one white and I cut these at two and a fourth inches each. Um, and then I sewed them together, just all the way down. So these are just strips like as long as the bolt of fabric. So two and a fourth inches by the width of the fabric. Sewed it all the way down and then I ironed the seam so it's towards this darker brown fabric. Okay, so and I, you're gonna do that with um, two, you're gonna make two sets that look like this. So you'll have two brown strips and two white strips if you're doing the play mat. If you're doing a bigger quilt with like five trains and they're going either direction, you'll want to cut, you're going to make three or four of these, probably four of these sets. So you'll cut four strips that are brown and four that are white. So once you get it to this point, um, if I had my other sets, I would sew my other set right here so that I would have white, brown, white, brown if I'm doing the play mat. And then if I'm doing the big train, it would look white, brown, white, brown, white, brown, white, brown by all the way down. So um, you'd have all of your strips by the width of the fabric. Once you get it to that point, you're going to cut it in half. So just find um, your halfway point here. And if, if I had all my strips, I would cut this way with all of my strips. I'm just gonna kind of crease this, open it back up so I know where my halfway point is and then cut it in half. Then you're gonna take however many strips you have in your set and sew those together. So if you're doing a big train quilt, by this point it's gonna look like, you know, really big already. But I'm just gonna do it like this and sew it together. Take it off your machine and you're going to iron 
whatever the seam that you just did towards that darker fabric again. So you're going to iron it down. It'll look like this. And then you're just going to keep repeating that process. So now you might have a really wide strip, and but you're going to take all of it, fold it in half, find the center line, and then cut it. So it's just going to keep getting longer and longer and longer um, so that you can have your track there. Okay, and once you feel like it's so long that it's just unwieldy and it's not worth doing it anymore, um, you're going to make sure you have all of your seams ironed so that it's facing the dark, darker fabric that you chose, whichever one that is. And then you're going to take your cutting mat, which I don't have with me at the moment, but you'll take your long cutting mat and cut it. The, the wider you cut these, the bigger the track's going to be. So if you want it just for like really small trains, you could maybe get away with like two inches, but I would suggest more two and a half or three inches just so that it's going to be wide enough after it's sewn into your quilt for whoever you're giving it to to drive their little trains along it. So then you're going to cut these into strips two to two and a half inches wide. So you'll have a long strip. It should look something like this. Like I said, this was only one and a half. I would do two and a half if I were you, um, or two inches. And then this is what you're gonna take, and sew. you'll have just a super long strip of your paste track, and you're gonna sew it along the edge of your quilt top. When you're going around the corners, um, let me grab the quilt here so I can show you. You're going to put it right sides down. When you're going around the corners, you can pin it if you'd like. I usually just kind of fuss with it. I just slow down and fuss with it until it's just how I want it. Um, but because all of these are cut, you can see that um, these points right here, it hasn't been backstitched right there. Um, so you might even lay it down like this where you're going to sew. And I'd put let me show you. So I'd put a pin right here because I'm saying, all right, this is where I'm going to start, lay down the start of my fabric. And then I lay this out and say, all right, this is where that it's going to go along that corner. Because what will happen, we're going to reinforce it along this portion right here. Because what will happen if you don't is all of these seams on the top end will just pop open once you iron it up. So you do that for all four corners. Measure out where each corner is going to land. And then what you'll do is come, and you know, you could do it along the, just the whole strip if you'd rather just do that to reinforce it. But come to where the corners are going to be, and you're just going to reinforce. You don't have to reinforce the bottom because you're going to sew that into your quilt top. You just need to reinforce the top side because once you get it right sides together and you iron it open, you don't want those seams to pop. So. You're just going to take it, and it's kind of like we're backstitching. We're just reinforcing, almost like we're backstitching each of these seams. And you really want to do it, you're, you don't want to do it um, very far from the edge of your fabric, because just like an eighth inch away, because we'll attach our binding at a quarter inch, and if you did it, if you tried to reinforce it like in the middle here, then that stitching is going to show in your finished product, and that's not really what you want. So you'll just uh, sew your track down, right sides together, iron it out. Then you're going to baste it and quilt it. So put whatever you want on the back. You can do a fuzzy backing. I just did some batting and this really durable fabric on the back. And then for the binding, you do a bias binding. If you don't know what a bias binding is, that just makes it so that you can bind over the curves. It makes it really stretchy so that you can just kind of stretch it and it'll give with you and just make this nice curved binding here. And then there you have it. Your quilt is done and ready to have some trains drive on it.